What is going on today, everybody? It's Buddy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I took this absolutely disgusting and poorly running Honda Civic and turned it into thousands of dollars of profit. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Buddy, and I buy and sell cars for a living full time. So if you wanna learn how to get profitable vehicles at low prices, how to fix them up and sell them, make a bunch of money on the back end, be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss anything. I'm about to show you guys the entire process on how much I knew I should buy this car for, how much I knew I could sell it for, how much money I had to put into it, and ultimately how much money I made. So without further ado, Let's jump right into the video. So one night I was doing my normal nightly routine, scrolling through autotempest.com, looking for deals, when this 2014 Civic caught my eye. It was a 2014 Honda Civic for only $3,200. Now, I knew there was something definitely wrong with it when I saw the price, because a 2014 Honda Civic is going to be over $5,000 no matter what, even if it had a quarter million miles. This Civic only had 190,000 miles, and for a Honda, that's really not too bad at all, especially because Hondas have the best engines, in my opinion, out of any other car. In the pictures, it looked to be in decent shape. You can definitely see the spot where it got into the accident here by the hood. That's definitely not a dent that you could just pop right out. You can see the grill was cracked as well, so that needed to be replaced, but overall, the body looked to be in somewhat decent shape from the pictures. Going into the interior, you can see this thing was absolutely filthy just based on these back seats. Some serious stains in this thing. Looks like it hasn't been cleaned in years. Also, the front seats had covers on them, so you know they were either as nasty as the back seats or they were all torn up. So going down to the description, it reads, has been in an accident, but still runs. Just started making a loud noise from engine, 3200, or best offer. Clean title. So let's break this description down a bit. Now obviously this is not a very appealing description, so we at least know that the seller is being upfront with the issues, which is a good thing. Also, the 3200 or best offer shows me that the seller is ready to get rid of this thing. They are negotiable on the price, which is music to my ears. Now with the current car market being all over the place, I wanted to see what something like this would sell for in decent condition. I first checked out Kelly Blue Book and it books for around $6,000 for this car in good condition. This one has been in an accident, but it's still a clean title, so let's just take five dollars off the price to be safe. I also like to do a little bit of comparisons, so I looked up other 2014 Civics and I popped them open on autotempest.com again to see what some of the listings are priced at. I found the few higher model 2014 Civics priced around $10,000, so I'm pretty sure I can get close to that 6000 mark for this thing. Now obviously if the engine is not all torn up from that noise it started making. So I shot the seller message asking, do you still have it? I have a few questions. They responded with yes, it's still for sale. I was curious about the engine noise and asked if the engine noise started happening after the car was in the accident. They responded the noise just started happening a few days ago. The car drove fine after the accident a few months ago. So I know the accident wasn't the cause of the noise and decided to just check out the car and see what's going on with it. So I scheduled a good time that worked for the both of us and I set out to see the car in person. Now while we're on our way to the seller's house, I want to mention one thing that is super important that you always need to bring with you and that is an OBD reader. Especially for a car like this has been an accident. I'll be sure to put a link in the description for three OBD readers I recommend at three different price points. Also, if you notice in the conversation with the seller, I didn't bring up the price once. What I recommend in the other car flipping videos if you've seen them is to always ask do you have any wiggle room on the price. Doing that will feel out the seller to see if they're willing to negotiate. You don't want to waste your time with someone who's super firm on the price if the price doesn't make sense for you. The seller has this car priced at 3200 OBO which means or best offer which tells me right away they are a motivated seller. And I also wanted to tell you a bit more about the site I mentioned before autotempest.com and since I already use them to look for car flips they agree to sponsor today's video and if you guys saw my previous car flipping video, you'll know that I found this gorgeous BMW M3 from their site. And I'm going to show you guys real quick how I personally use this website to find cars to flip. So in the tabs here, you can search used cars or you can search new cars. So we'll click BMW on the make and for the model, we'll click M3, enter in my zip code and we'll set it to 1500 miles for now. And I'll go to advanced search since I want to search the E36 generation. So check this out. It's going to show us listings for all M3s in this generation from all the major sites like cars.com, eBay, TrueCar and more. Now the really cool thing I like best about this site is you can search national results from Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. So for example, let's click on Marketplace and I'll show you what I mean. So here you can search the Southeast region, the South, the Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, Texas area, and the Rocky Mountains all separately. Or you can even do a national search and hit this button here. So now you'll see that it opened up all the tabs and you literally get every single BMW M3 from this generation on all of Facebook Marketplace with one click. This is super convenient if you're looking for the best possible deals, especially if you're looking for a somewhat uncommon car. This exact method is the method that I actually use to find this Nissan Hard body as well. I don't usually use the Facebook app, but I just search everything through Auto Tempest because it's a little more streamlined. Now you can do the same thing here with Craigslist. Just hit the Craigslist button and you can either search a region or you can click the button at the top for national search again. Since I found this website, it's been a complete game changer for me on finding deals. So huge shout out to autotempest.com for helping make videos like this possible. And be sure to check them out in the description below using the link. And after 15 minutes of driving, I finally arrived here at the seller's house. Now the first thing I noticed was that the pictures and the ad made the exterior look like it was in better shape than 
I originally thought. The exterior looked to have some hail damage on the roof as well as some hail damage on the trunk lid. I also couldn't tell from the pictures, but both sides of the corners of the back of the car has some pretty nice sized dents. Now going over to the tires, they actually all look to be in pretty good shape. One of the tires was getting pretty bald, but not too bad. So one tire out of the four needed to be replaced. Also here on the fender, it looks like it's been pretty beat up and there was just some nicks and some dents and some scratches all along the car. Now coming over here to the hood, nothing surprised me here. I knew this was smashed here by the pictures. There was no internal damage under the hood. So it looked to be all cosmetic, but it definitely needed a new hood as well and a new grill to get this front end looking decent again. It had little scratches and scuffs here and there, but for 190,000 miles, it's nothing that was too gross of an eyesore, especially since the clear coat was in pretty decent shape. Now going on to the interior, this thing was absolutely disgusting. Like I've seen some nasty cars in my day, but literally all the seats in this car were so nasty and stained. I have no idea how people let their cars get this bad, but nonetheless, it will definitely be a negotiation point for me to try and get this car for as absolutely cheap as possible. I'm pretty confident in my detailing skills, so I think I can get this thing looking pretty sharp again on the inside. Now the main thing I wanted to take a look at was the mechanical issues. Now the good thing about this car is as soon as I pushed the start button, it started right up with no issues at all. So that was nice. But the dash lit up like a Christmas tree. ABS light, vehicle stability light, airbag light, the steering light, everything lit up. So it definitely had some issues that needed to be taken care of. I asked the seller if any airbags were set off in the accident and they told me the driver's airbag was deployed so that needs to be fixed and replaced. Also, I did hear that awful engine noise they were talking about. From the sound of it, I instantly knew it was a belt issue. And upon popping the hood, I tested how much play was in the belt and that confirmed my assumption. It was definitely a belt issue, so not too big of a deal. I took it around the block and considering all the lights on the dash, it actually drove really nice. There was really not a crazy amount of road noise or anything I could feel with the suspension, so I was really happy about that. So after the test drive, it was time for the negotiation. Now, the seller did post in the ad, 3200 or best offer. When someone puts or best offer, it means they are ready to sell this thing. I brought a wad of cash, so I'm gonna throw it in their face and see what I can get. So I pretty much said this. We both know this thing needs a lot of work and the car is in worse shape than I originally thought. The pictures actually made this thing look better. I got $2,000 for you and that's all I really believe it's worth. And to be real with you guys, I didn't even care if he was gonna take that $2,000 offer or not because this car really did need a lot of work. So he hit me back with $2,500. I said, no, I'm good. I was ready to go look at another car that was close by. I told him best of luck and kind of started ending the conversation. And then he said, okay, okay, $2,250, let's meet in the middle. I figured it's somewhat reasonable and it'll probably leave me with a decent profit margin. So I shook his hand and we made a deal. So the seller gave me the keys and it's time to get this thing back to the house. Now on the way home, I want to talk to you guys about searching for cars. Now real quick in the keyword section of where you're searching, you can always look for a listing that says OBO, also known as or best offer. Like I said multiple times, it'll really show you some serious motivated sellers. Now another thing you can do is search for things like needs paint or it needs to be towed. Obviously if you enjoy painting cars and you're not a huge fan of engine work, then searching needs paint might find you a nice car that just needs paint and no engine work. So use that search bar to help you find what you're looking for when you're looking for a car to flip. And the last thing is don't be afraid to walk away from a car. Like you saw earlier, I was ready to just walk away from this car because, you know, like I said, it needed a lot of work. Don't be afraid to have a couple of cars lined up when you're going to go search for a car. That way you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you're really motivated to buy one car, especially if it's in worst case than you originally thought, kind of like this car was when I first showed up. Now, after about a 20 minute drive, we finally got the car back to the house and now it's time to start getting this thing fixed up and ready for its new owner. And as you guys know, I like to keep things organized. So I made a to-do list of all the issues with the car. So let's go ahead and knock this list out. So the first thing I wanted to address was the belt noise because this thing was so loose that it was going to fly off at any second. I'm actually surprised it made it home. So first things first is to take the belt off and see what's going on and see if the tensioner is loose because that's what I'm assuming is wrong with it. So I pulled the belt off and I made a strange discovery. One of the idler pulleys looks like it broke. That definitely explains that loud engine noise and all the extra slack in the belt. So I screwed out the bolt that held in the broken idler pulley and pulled it right out. And just to show you guys what this thing is supposed to look like compared to what it actually looks like. Now, to be honest, I have no idea how this thing even drove home with this busted wheel. It's a miracle the belt didn't just fly off immediately right when the idler pulley snapped. So we got a new pulley and we threw it on the engine block with the screw that originally took off and snapped the belt back on and boom, no more engine noise. So let's go ahead and cross that off the list and move on to the next thing, which was that bald tire. But first, let's start our money investment 
tested chart so we can stay organized throughout this project. So far we have $2,250 for the car and the idler pulley only costs $16. So now luckily for me, these common cars with smaller wheels are super common tire size. You can literally go to any tire shop and get a used tire for them. So I jacked up the car, I pulled the wheel off and threw it in the trunk of my car and I took it to my local tire guy. I picked out a used tire and that was only $40. He was able to throw the tire on my rim and balance it and I got back to my house and I was able to slap the new tire on the car. So now we got four good tires so let's go ahead and cross the tire off the list and move on to the next mechanical issue and that was that ABS light. Now this is a pretty complicated issue that involved a decent amount of car knowledge. So the ABS code I got back when I plugged in my computer was a U0122. In short what the code means is the car ECU also known as the car's computer lost communication with the car's VSA or vehicle stability assist module. Most of you know this as an ABS module. ABS stands for anti-lock braking system. In short what it does when you have to slam on your brakes it keeps your wheels from getting locked up and make sure you can brake in an emergency situation. Now this took me a bit of work to make sure there was no shorts, busted wires, or any open circuits between the computer and the ABS module. I ultimately concluded it just needs a new ABS module. So I went on eBay and I found the used one here for $150 because all the new ones I found were well over $400. So I popped off the old brake lines off the old ABS module and then I was able to wiggle it out. I was able to get the new ABS module in place, reattached all the brake lines to the new ABS module, secured it in place, and after I bled the brakes because anytime you remove a brake line off the car, air gets in the brake system and you need to bleed the brakes after. I have a whole video I will leave in the description for you guys on how to bleed your brakes and it was all said and done. I turned the key on and the VSA light and the ABS light were all shut off. So we can go ahead and we can cross off the ABS light off the list and move on to the next thing, which was that airbag. So first things first is to find an airbag for this thing because if you recall, the seller did say when it was crashed, the driver's side's airbag was deployed. So I found an airbag and something called a clock spring for the airbag for a total combined amount of $450. Now, unfortunately, I don't have footage of the airbag getting swapped because I was sick and I paid my uncle to do it for me, but that goes to a point that I do wanna make here real quick. Maybe you get a car and feel uncomfortable about doing something like an airbag yourself because they can actually be very dangerous to mess with if you don't know what you're doing. For complicated things, you can always pay someone to do it if you account that in your budget when you're buying the car. So nonetheless, the new airbag was installed and the airbag light was still on. So what I had to do was swap out something called the SRS module, also known as Supplemental Restraint System Module. Essentially, it's just a module that controls the airbags in the car. Now, instead of spending hundreds of dollars on this little module, I found a company on eBay who will actually just reset the software of the module for you. It's $38 ship, so I pulled apart the center console and all the way here under the dash, I pulled out the little airbag module. I threw it in a box and I shipped it out to this company. And a few days later, I got it back with all the software reset and I put it back in place and plugged it all together and then put the center console all back together with all the plastic trims and boom, absolutely no more lights here on the dash. And if you guys remember when I got this thing, the dash lit up like a Christmas tree, but there is no more lights here for any error codes. And that's it for all the mechanical issues we got this thing running super smooth and it's honestly a really nice car to drive but it is ugly so let's start on the interior of this thing and let's move on to the next thing on the list which was to detail the interior now, before we detail, let's jump back to our money invested chart so we can add a few things. The used tire was only $40. The ABS module was $150 on eBay used. The airbag and clock spring came out to $450 combined. I gave my uncle $80 for the labor to throw the airbag and the clock spring in for me. And it costed $38 to have the SRS module set out for a software reset. That brings us to roughly only $3,000 and we got this thing running super smooth with no mechanical issues. So that's really not bad at all. So now let's get to that detail. Now, some of you are probably wondering how in the world this car got so filthy and to answer that question I really couldn't even tell you. All I know is it's absolutely disgusting and I need some serious time and effort to get this thing cleaned but it can be cleaned. Now the first thing I needed to do was pull the seats out of this thing for a full proper detail. To pull a seat out of a vehicle all you need to do is unscrew these four screws that hold the seats down and then unplug the wiring harness under the seats. You'll be able to pull the seats out at that point. Now once the seats are out it's time to soak them in some cleaning chemicals and my favorite chemical to clean with is called Hypercleanse by Lithium Auto Care. This stuff is an extremely strong stain remover and it'll definitely be needed to take the stains out of this thing. And I do have a promo code here for you guys. It's Buddy's DIY 20 for 20% 
10% off everything here on Lithium Auto Care's website. I'll be sure to leave that here in the description below. They make the best detailing products bar none. Now, after I let the seats soak in some hypercleanse for a few minutes, I then used a drill brush to knock loose all the dirt and grime. And after that, I used a standard carpet cleaner to soak out all the years of dirt, sweat, and whatever gross stuff was in these seats. And as you can see, the carpet cleaner is pulling out some super nasty stuff out of these seats. I actually had to repeat the entire process a few times in order to get all the stains out. And after a lot of work, you can see there is a huge difference between the before and after. I also repeated the process on the back seats, which went from absolutely filthy and disgusting to a regular looking back seat. It almost seems like the back seats were the worst of it. This took a solid two hours of scrubbing and sucking the nastiest out of these back seats. And I repeated the process here on the carpets, which were also super filthy. And then I used the hyper cleanse on the door panels, which again were super gross. I spent probably a solid half day detailing this thing on the inside. And after all the detailing was all said and done, I put some new mats in the car that I found on Amazon for about 50 bucks and they have the Honda logo already on them and they turned out to be a really nice touch to wrap up the interior. And here is a before and after of the interior when it was done. It really turned out to be a nice sharp interior after everything. I wasn't sure if I can get all the stains out of these seats, but this thing came out looking super nice on the inside. So let's go ahead and cross off the detail off the list and now we're done with all the mechanical issues as well as everything on the interior. So now it's time to focus on the last thing and that was the exterior of this thing. And the first thing I wanted to address was that messed up and mangled hood. So the cheapest hood I can find was on a site called carid.com for $258 after shipping. And when it came in the mail, I opened the box up and I was really upset when I saw it had some dents. And also the corner here of the hood was completely bent in. So I called car ID and they picked up the old hood and dropped off a new hood, which took a little bit, but thank goodness this one came with no dents. So now it was time to hang this thing up and give it a good spray with some matching paint. I blasted it down with some clear coat after the paint was done. Now after letting it dry for a day, it was time to pull the old one off this Honda and slap the new one on and boom, no more dented hood and this new one is looking pretty sharp. So now real quick, let's jump back to the money investor chart and add a few things. We got another $50 for the mats. We have $258 for the hood, including shipping and we have $60 here for the hood paint. So now that the hood is done, we're gonna cross it off the list and we'll do something easy and just change this front headlight. Now something that I didn't realize when I bought this car is that the driver's headlight wasn't even on. Now lucky for me, this is not a BMW like my car and it didn't take too long to replace. The only inconvenient part was removing the battery out of the way so I actually get my hands in there and swap the headlight out. And after only about 10 minutes, I got the new headlight in and we were good to go. So let's cross off the headlight off the list and move on to the next thing, which was that busted grill from being in the accident. I was able to find a grill on eBay for about $50 and then I noticed it didn't come with an emblem. So I I had to spend another $20 and I grabbed an emblem to replace the old one. Now replacing the grill was pretty easy. You can see just some plastic trim tabs that held the grill onto the bumper. And if you use a special trim removal tool, it's totally cake. So I slapped the new grill in and then peeled the adhesive back on the emblem and then threw it on the new grill and the grill came out looking absolutely awesome. So let's cross off the grill replacement off the list and move on to seeing what we can do about those dents in the back. I got some quotes here from some PDR guys and they told me it's going to be close to $600 just to fix these two rear dents. Now, you guys usually know that I like to get these cars looking to as close as perfect as I can when I'm selling them. So that leaves me with a point that I do wanna make with you guys. There are more than just these dents in the back and there's also this mangled fender here in the front as well as the hail damage and these little dents here in the door and the trunk lid. And you can see here, there's our screws that are holding in the bumper. If I were to fix everything perfect here on this Honda body, it would cost well over $1,000, maybe even close to $2,000 to get this thing actually looking really good. And with a 190,000 miles, it's not going to be an expensive car with a huge margin. So it's not in my best interest to make this thing look perfect and spend crazy money here on the body. Maybe if you had it under 70,000 miles, it would sell for a lot more, but not this thing with this many miles. So I did my best to pop out the dents so they weren't such a crazy eyesore. I touched up some spots with some touch-up paint and left it at that because someone is going to buy this for the reliability of the Honda engine, not the looks. I also worked my magic here on the bumper since the clips of the bumper were gone and needed these screws to hold it in place. So I actually took these screws out and I used the wheel well as a mounting spot for the bumper. So at least it'd be a cleaner look and you wouldn't see big screws that are holding on the bumper. So with the dents crossed off the list, it's time to go to the final details and that was to restore these headlights. Now I have an entire video on how to restore your headlights so they look brand new here from the factory. So be sure to check out that video here in the description below because I know some of you watching right now have some foggy headlights that need some love. And you can see the before and after comparing one headlight to the other. It is a complete night and day difference and it looks so much better and on top of that it's going to give you more visibility when driving at night. Now to 
to make sure they stay nice and clear, I always put a layer of ceramic coating on them as well. This ceramic coating is also from Lithium Auto Care, like I mentioned earlier. And you can use my discount code on their website as well to get this stuff. It's Buddy's DIY 20. And this ceramic coating is really reasonably priced and I found it to be really high quality stuff. Now, the last thing to do before I post this thing for sale is to give it a final wash. I like to take my car flips here to a self-service car wash and get them picture ready. So for only a few dollars, I gave this thing a nice scrubbing and when I got back home, it looked absolutely awesome compared to what it looked like when I picked it up. So finally, it's time to get some pictures and make some money off this thing. Now, if you watch my other car flipping videos, I always recommend to take pictures vertically because that's going to really make the picture on the ad stand out. Now, when people shop for a car, they shop on their phone and you can see here the difference of the horizontal car listing compared to a vertical car listing. So make sure that you snap those pictures vertically. I decided to post a car for $6,000 since that what the blue book value was at and I wasn't too sure how this thing would sell considering it did have some bit of cosmetic issues on the exterior. But I must have forgot it's still a newer 2014 Honda with no mechanical issues for only $6,000 and the messages came pouring in. Now after three days of replying to tire kickers and low ballers, I found someone who wanted a cheap reliable car for their daughter. They came by and test drove it and really saw how nice it drove. And with the clean interior, only 30 minutes later, I had $5,300 in my hand. I did go down from the price a bit more than I wanted because I wanted to stay at that $5,500 range, but sometimes the first serious offer you get is the best one. So I decided to just shake his hand and we made a deal. So now the car is sold. We're going to do some math here together to see what the profit is. And we're also going to break down how much labor I did so we can get an hourly rate to get an idea how much I'm making an hour with these things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the money list and add everything together. I'm going to add the last three things, which is the headlight bowl for $7, the grill for 50 and the emblem for 20. And I'm going to throw in another hundred dollars of gas detailing products and all that other good stuff. And that's going to bring us to a grand total of $3,573 invested in this flip. Now with a sale price of $5,300, that leaves us with a nice profit margin of $1,723. Not too bad at all. So let's see what happens if we break it down to how much money per hour I made. So the bell noise took about two hours for the new tire. It only took about an hour to go swap it out. To fix and diagnose the ABS module probably took around three hours. The airbag and steering light was only two hours considering my uncle did the clock spring and the airbag here for me. The detail took the longest by far at about seven hours of detailing. Painting the hood was about two hours. Swapping the headlight was about 15 minutes. The new grill and emblem was pretty fast at about 45 minutes. I messed with each dent for about an hour. So let's say two hours here on those rear two dents. The headlight buff was only about an hour. And then to wash it and get a picture ready and everything was only about an hour. Now we'll add another four hours of labor, driving around, posting the car, taking the pictures and all that good stuff. And adding all that stuff brings up a total hours of labor invested at 26 hours. Now we can take the profit of $1,723 divided by the 26 hours of labor and that comes out to just over $66 an hour. Not too bad at all. And as you guys can imagine, there's an absolute insane amount of work that goes into these videos. So being a patron would be much appreciated and I can focus on this YouTube thing full time. And I want to take a second here to apologize for taking so long to make these videos. I know you guys love them. 2023, I'm going to try and go full force on making many of these as possible. So be sure to subscribe, hit that like button so YouTube knows you guys love these videos. And if you ever want to talk to me personally, I actually personally respond to all my supporters here on Patreon to help them find deals or even give them mechanic advice on their own cars. Or you can even just be a patron so I can focus full time on making more content here for you guys. And again, huge shout out to autotempest.com for making videos like this possible. And I'll leave a link in the description for them as well. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's all I have here for you guys now. And I'll see you guys on the next flip video.